can we also address the situation? Now, I'm not trying to oversimplify things in an area where simplification is probably the worst tool to use because this is a very complex issue that we can't sort out in a 10 to 15 minute conversation. But just so you know, and I've already said this to you when we talked this afternoon, but others know, me, and I think Chewy's on the same page as me, but I'll just speak for me because Chewy's not here tonight. Um, our, our sort of our heart is with the Palestinian people. You know, what they've been put through, uh, how they've been crushed into a corner of the world, but literally behind walls, you know, without food, without power. Um, but we also vehemently reject the actions of Hamas, for example, going into a music festival and, and slaughtering and killing, you know, 18 to 22 year olds. How do we hold both those positions and not get caught out by either side saying, um, you know, Israel brought it on themselves and Hamas just responded or vice versa. Uh, Hamas and the people of Palestine brought it on themselves and Israel's just retaliating. Because to me, this seems more nuanced than that. I think it's a matter of where you set the frame. Um, but clearly history did not begin last week. Yeah. So there's been an occupation for 75 years. There's been a blockade of Gaza for 17 years. There is this year escalating violence uh, on the part of settlers backed by the Israeli army. You can call all of that provocation without excusing uh, the attack and the abuse on civilians. So I would say if you hide people behind a wall for 17 years, they're going to come out. Something yeah. was going to happen at some yeah. point. No one, no one outside of military intelligence could have guessed what. What happened in Israel included war crimes and provocation does not justify or excuse war crimes. And then what Hamas did may have triggered, but neither justifies nor excuses the overwhelming and ongoing crimes in Gaza, which we must stop. That's how I hold it in my hands. There are two tasks that need doing immediately. One is a ceasefire and the restoration of humanitarian aid. And two is somehow to address the causes and work toward a solution. This cannot be just one more round of violence. And at some point, for God's sakes, let the people who have committed crimes, people who acted, people who set the orders of battle, let them go to an international court. Do you think in that future international court, there will be people from Hamas and from Israel both being tried for uh, war crimes? I'm not a judge of this, and I'm not uh, a war crimes lawyer, but we do know that to attack civilians <coughs> uh, intentionally is a crime, to kill and kidnap civilians is a crime. We also know that 2.3 million people in Gaza are held behind a wall. They are being collectively punished. Attacks are targeting residential buildings, and now there is this forcible transfer of a civilian population. Those all seem like crimes. Some of them are vast, and yeah. some of them are smaller. Yeah, I mean, I guess you're, th thank you for that answer. I guess what, my position, being far more ignorant than yourself and others in this, is that it appears to me war crimes are being uh, attributed to both sides and committed by both sides. You know, if the incursion into the um, into the music festival was a, a military action by the government of Gaza, Hamas, if it was, then that's a war crime. But I, I wanted to say as well, I wanted, oh, sorry, <coughs> yes, do, you, do you want to respond? I agree with that.